All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're talking about the Cloudflare outage that happened this past Monday. And this graph right here shows pretty much why for a large portion of people in the entire world, the internet just stopped working for about an hour. This right here shows the total number of DNS queries to Cloudflare's 1.1 and other services that provide DNS lookups for users. And due to a misconfiguration in Cloudflare's routing, they essentially took their entire service offline, which is the DNS resolver for so many people. So we're gonna go through, talk about what happened and really how to keep from being affected by incidents like this, because DNS is one of the most critical things on the internet. Without DNS, you do not have the internet as we know it because you can't find anything. Even if you've got a working internet connection, you're not going to be able to use any services because everything relies on DNS. And anytime you hear about massive outages, like the Facebook outage that happened a few years ago, you'd be surprised how often it's because of DNS. And so it's one of those things where if DNS goes wrong, everything breaks. Even though DNS is a very small service, it does not require a lot of throughput. It doesn't require a lot of performance. If you do not have DNS, you do not have internet and nobody can reach you. And this is what happened to Cloudflare. And so we're gonna go over what happened and how to avoid being affected if you were affected by these things. Because for me, I was lucky enough to not be affected at all because I actually use redundant DNS and you should as well. Okay, so this right here is Cloudflare's blog that goes over what happened on July 14th. And it occurred around 7 p.m. East Coast time in the United States. And what happened was Cloudflare pushed out a new configuration that essentially published routes for their 1.1 IP addresses, all of those DNS resolvers that you use, and they stole those routes from the actual services. So because of them sending out these routes and essentially setting up new services that are coming out, it broke anybody's ability to contact these DNS resolvers. And so that is what caused this graph to occur, where essentially their queries dropped to zero. They lost all of their queries because nobody was actually able to figure out where the IP address was. And so when you can't figure out where your DNS server is, you essentially can't look up anything. I wanna go over a quick brief introduction as to what DNS is, because I think it helps a lot on how to understand what everything is and why it's so important. So DNS is the backbone of how you resolve something like blog.cloudflare.com to an IP address that you can actually reach a server on. It is a hierarchical system that starts at the root level right here with com, then going to Cloudflare, then going to blog. And essentially it is the way the modern internet works. You are able to essentially, instead of having to publish IP addresses that you have to remember to type in to get to websites, you essentially just write out a domain name like this and your computer queries a DNS server to say, hey, do you know where blog.cloudflare.com is? And the DNS server will either know where it is or know how to find it. So that's why DNS is so critical. If I don't have DNS, even if I have access to the internet, I have no idea how to figure out where blog.cloudflare.com is. And so effectively, even though I have internet access, nothing will be able to go through because nothing can figure out where to go to. So I'm gonna skip over some of the niche stuff on exactly how DNS works, but essentially whenever you were to look up something like blog.cloudflare.com, if you were to do a root resolver where you actually go back to the base levels of everything, it would be very slow. You would have to first query where the root domain server was. Then you have to figure out where com was. Then you have to figure out where Cloudflare was. Then you have to figure out where blog.cloudflare.com was. And so because of that, your queries would be really slow and just using the internet would be slow because every single page load would require looking up so much information and so many round trip times to figure out where everything is. So instead, we use what's called caching DNS servers. So instead of you yourself and your computer every single time looking up the root authority for where everything's supposed to be on a DNS perspective, Instead, what you do is you have a designated server called a DNS resolver that does all of that for you. The first time it turns on, it has to go through that really slow process of first figuring out where the root is, then where com is, then where Cloudflare is, then where blog.cloudflare.com is. And that first time is slow, but then it is able to remember that. And it essentially has a little memory. It says, oh, hey, next time somebody asks for that, 
I actually already looked that up recently. It is here. And so now for that second person who queries it, it is a instantaneous lookup because it's just got it in memory. It's like, oh yeah, I already saw that. Here you go. So that is why you use an upstream caching DNS server because otherwise your internet will be so slow. So to take it a step forward, you also generally use your local router as that caching DNS server for your house as well. So your house or business essentially does the exact same thing. Your router keeps a result of the most often used queries and returns them. So that way it doesn't have to query anything else. And then what your router will do is your router will just ask an upstream DNS server. And that upstream DNS server can either be something like Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1, or maybe it's by your ISPs. There's a lot of ways to do it, but a lot of people use Cloudflare's. And I do as well, because Cloudflare's DNS server is really, really, really fast, and they're spread over all over the world. So more likely than not, it is a very short hop to whatever data center your internet comes into. So that's the basics of what we're talking about here. DNS is critical to the internet. Without DNS, you effectively do not have internet access. And to get the fastest possible performance, it's really useful to use Cloudflare's 1.1.1.1 resolver to be able to query it because it is a very fast DNS server. So you spend less and less time looking up domain names and more and more time actually serving web content, which makes web pages just load faster. So I still recommend using 1.1.1.1 for your DNS server because it just makes your internet faster. However, in this case, because of a configuration error, Cloudflare's 1.1.1 IP address, that entire IP address that runs not just 1.1, but their other secondary systems, disappeared. It was unable to be contacted on the internet. I was actually working at the time and noticed it going down. And when I just went to ping 1.1.1.1 right here, there was no route to it. Nobody could find it. It was just essentially gone from the internet. And so that is why this dropped out and nobody was able to get a result back from these services. So if you were to use just Cloudflare's DNS resolvers during the time this was down, your internet was down. So because DNS is so critical and effectively no DNS means no internet, you always wanna make sure you've got at least two DNS servers set up. And that's why for me and my clients, we honestly did not notice too much of an outage because DNS by design is designed to be very redundant. Whenever you're setting up an IP address on a computer or even an upstream router, you can come into your network over here and you'll see what DNS servers are set up. If we come down to DNS, you can see that you don't just use a single DNS server. In this case, I have two of them and I actually run two local DNS servers. So I've got my own actual records I can add in there. And both of these two local DNS servers actually look at upstream two DNS servers. But for somebody who is not running their own DNS server, what you should do is have two entirely separate companies run DNS for you. And that's what I do. And that's my defaults for most people. So whenever I'm setting up DNS for somebody, I always do primary 1.1.1.1, but then for the secondary, I use 8.8.8.8. .8 so Cloudflare is 1.1.1.1, and then Google is 8.8.8.8. .8 There's tons of these resolvers out there. You can pick whichever one you like. Some are more focused on privacy, some do ad blocking, but pick two from two separate companies because for us and all my clients with this setup, when 1.1.1.1 was not resolvable, DNS just automatically looks to the next one. It says, all right, can't get there. Don't know what's going on. Who cares? And it essentially just started querying all my DNS lookups to 8.8.8.8. .8 and because of that, there was pretty much no blip. And so now I want to show you how to actually set this up on Unify, just so you make sure you've got it. If you've followed my setup guide, I always recommend it. But we'll go ahead and show you on a Unify router really quick exactly what to do. Okay, so we've just logged into my Unify router at my house, and we've just gone into settings and internet. And this right here is just my AT&T internet connection, and it is using DHCP. And if I go ahead and click on it, I can show you how to configure it to make sure to use those two separate DNS servers. So if you've got it set to all manual, you actually get DHCP from your upstream service. So AT&T will have their own local caching DNS servers, that essentially my router is told, hey, if you need these, 
go ahead and check out these for DNS. So that also is a single point of failure because if AT&T's services for those two go down, even if the internet is still working, your internet does go down. So instead, you wanna come in here and hit manual. And for your IP4 connection, you can keep it on DHCP v4, so your public IP address will get from that, but you can uncheck auto and set it to those two services. It's 1.1.1.1 and 8.8.8.8. What this will do is it'll tell my dream machine at my house, set your primary server to Cloudflare's resolver, and then if Cloudflare's down, go ahead and ping Google's. So that way you have that failover from two separate massive companies. And if both of them are down, you can probably guess that a majority of the internet is down themselves. And there's probably not too much you can do about it. So if you just go ahead and apply those changes, that will give you that redundancy and why even if you want to use these much faster caching DNS servers, you still can, but always make sure to use two of them from two separate providers because even though Cloudflare has 1.1.1.1 and 1.0.0.1, so two different resolvers, in this case, they both went down. And so even though they have two of them, if they're both able to go down from the same configuration change, it's not like you really have two of them. And so that is what you should do. Now in the future, there might be a great video there where you can actually create your own DNS resolver that queries root DNS servers and means that you don't rely on any other DNS servers out there. Instead, you just run your own, but that's probably for another video. If you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. If you wanna hire me, there's a link for that down in the description below. And have a good one, bye.